I finally finished building this Rube Goldberg style clock that advances the hour through a series of overly complicated mechanical systems. Now before this, I don't think I've ever seen a clock with a marble slide on it and an increasingly large set of dominoes. So I'll show you how this all works in a minute, but first let me explain how I built this thing. Also, thanks to FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video. So in this video, I'll quickly run you through how I designed and built this clock, and then I'll show you how all these systems come together to form this one-of-a-kind Rube Goldberg machine clock. And for a little more detail on the background of this clock, you can check out my previous video. I started out by designing the whole thing in Fusion 360, which took a really long time. Then I laser cut a lot of cardboard to make this flimsy prototype to test tolerances and other stuff like that. And then after spending a couple more days worth of time on fixing different issues, I finished the final design and cut that out of 3mm sheets of acrylic. Then I began the hours and hours of assembly that these 176 pieces consumed out of my life. And just when I thought my back was going to collapse from bending over my desk for so long, a company called FlexiSpot sent in a brand new four-leg electric standing workbench. And before I show you how this clock works when it's all assembled, allow me to show you this awesome desk. Like I said, this is one of FlexiSpot's newest electric standing desks. It's called the E7 Plus, and I can't even describe how great this desk has been for working on projects like this clock that require so many hours of work and have so many pieces. Instead of leaning over your desk or workbench, you can now raise it up to the most comfortable height and work from there. And one of the main reasons this makes such a great workbench is because of its incredible stability, even all the way up at 51 inches. The E7 Plus desk can lift up to 440 pounds and has a static load of 540 pounds. And this keypad on the side here allows you to bring the surface to anywhere between 26 and 51 inches. And it also has four different presets that you can set to any height. If you think you'd benefit from a desk like this, I've linked it down in the description. FlexiSpot also offers a ton of accessories for this desk that you can find through that link, like a cable management tray, monitor arms, drawers, and a bunch of other stuff. All right, now I'll show you how this clock works. So to start, here's the basic idea. We have hours and minutes. So to read this clock, we look here and then here. And like any Rube Goldberg machine, there are various types of overly complicated mechanisms here. Five main ones in this case. A gravity cam, a marble and track, a kicking mechanism, a set of dominoes, and a ratchet system. And when all of these systems work together, they can successfully advance the hour, indicated here. So say we're at 7.15 and 45 minutes goes by. So we're just about to approach the o'clock point. When the minute hand reaches the two zeros as part of the next hour, the zeros drop down off the cam and get the marble rolling. Then the marble reaches the kicker, which begins the chain reaction of falling dominoes. And since the last domino is heavier than the rest, it has enough force to release this latch, which frees a spring-loaded ratchet pawl that pushes the disc to show the next hour. But also like any Rube Goldberg machine, everything here must be reset. And this was the tricky part, because usually each system in Rube Goldberg machine is reset by hand by the person that built the machine. But for this clock to work autonomously, I had to figure out a way to make the clock individually reset each one of its own systems by itself. And each system is kind of resetting together at the same time, but for the sake of explaining this, I'll just tell it in the same order that the systems go off. So we'll start with the marble. After the marble hit the kicker, it rolled back down behind the clock, they waited here for this rotating elevator to pick it up and then drop it off at the top to wait for the cam to drop again. Then once the dominoes have fallen, this crank slowly pulls them back up with a string that has a bunch of little stops because all of the dominoes are hinged. And this same crank is also resetting the ratchet system by pulling this lever to lock it into the gravity-operated latch, which stores potential energy in the spring that will be needed to advance to the next hour. And this process just goes on forever and ever. So now I'll stop talking and play some time lapses so you can see all these systems working together. Now maybe I'm just looking for some way to justify the countless number of hours I put into this clock, but I really like the way this thing turned out. Let me know what you think in the comments, and please let me know if you have any questions. And if you're feeling up to the challenge of building this clock, let me know if you'd like the files to cut one of these yourself. 
If you learned something interesting from this, consider liking the video and subscribing so you don't miss out on my future projects. And don't forget to check out FlexiSpot's new E7 Plus standing desk with the link in the description. Thanks for watching and have a great day.